While making this video, I remembered how many games I've actually 100%ed and I remembered how good it feels to get that accomplishment because that's exactly what it is, an accomplishment. A love letter to a game that you love and you just got the most out of it. You saw it all. Hey, what's up y'all? Welcome to The Brad Show. Thank you for clicking on this video. Please hit that like. Kind of similar to speedrunning, 100% completing a game is one of those things in the gaming community that everybody just generally respects. Unlike speedrunning, it's not as easy to stream it or, or do anything like that. So the community has kind of fallen by the wayside because streaming is what's hot right now. Streaming is what everybody's doing right now. Something everybody is doing right now. On OG YouTube, back in like 2015, I used to love watching people review all the games that they 100% completed and used like a fleshlight, left it with nothing. Mostly because the game developers used to make it extremely hard to 100% their games. I mean, seriously, RIP to the fallen soldiers who wanted to complete a Pokedex with a link cable and a dream. And the soldiers that missed one of the 243 Riddler trophies in the Batman games. You know, the one of 243 that you had one chance to get. Sitting up there with platinum trophies and speedrunning, 100%ing a game is one of the toughest things gamers today can do. But there are some games that don't try to fully lobotomize you as a player 100%ing their games, but rather make it easier for somebody who likes to 100% a game, but doesn't exactly want to put a thousand hours into it. On one hand, completion can be harder than finding the One Piece, but on the other hand, it's a very satisfying accomplishment that you know for 100%, whatever you paid for that game, you got that experience and more. You got your money's worth. And especially for the games that we knew were gonna be a vibe before it even came out. Like me, for example, I'm a whore for anything Spider-Man. Anything Spider-Man related, I'm on it. But that's not the only reason why I 100%ed Spider-Man Miles Morales. It was because the story was only 10 hours long anyways, and the next Spider-Man game was set to come out maybe three years later, of which I had known at the time. Now I know this probably gonna come out this year, but back then I was like, it's gonna be a while before we get another one. The combat and the combos were so shifty in that game. They had me in my room quipping like I was Spider-Man. I was genuinely sad to see that there was nothing left for me to do in that game other than swing around the city and stop one-off crimes. I spent so much time in that game, getting every suit, doing every training mission, and even just swinging around the city, unlocking every trick available. Even the ones that ended in Miles Morales banging his teeth into the cold concrete jungle floor. The best games to 100% have a little counter on the side or maybe on the save file or whatever that shows you how much you've completed and how far you have to go, and best believe this game had exactly that front and center, almost tempting anybody to try to complete it, try to get it to the fabled 100%, which I had done. What's even better than a 100% counter on a save file or built into the home screen is one that's built into the game itself. And in Ghost of Tsushima, there was one built into the map, kinda, in, in a sort of way. It was a 100% counter built into the map. Ghost of Tsushima is just a vibe all the way through. Such a vibe that it's so easy to get lost in the wind blowing paths. I mean, I be find myself going one direction and then in another direction, I see an enemy encampment waiting for me to come in there, bring the enemies to their knees with their hands in a cut position, begging for the ass whooping I'm about to hand them. The stealth in that game is the best stealth I've ever experienced in a third person game that doesn't have any guns in it. So going from each camp on map to map and section of the country to section of the country, ripping thine enemies limb from limb uh. was more satisfying than it probably should have been, which is great for 100%ing a game like Ghost of Tsushima. By the way, this might be an unpopular opinion, but I love the whole free up the enemy camps to save the people shtick. They pull it all the time and, and I'm just a sucker for it. It just makes me feel better knowing that all those ones and zeros finally have a place to call home. But then other people see the whole free up the enemy camps to save the people shtick as, you know, a mundane run of the mill task. And if that is you, then I'd perfectly recommend to you one of the God of War remakes, either of them. The new God of War games turn 100% completing a game from random run of the mill tasks to balls deep in hard ass boss battles throughout the whole post game. That's, that is how you 100% this game. That and a little bit of lore uncovering and bird watching slash murking. But can you really think of a better way to 100% a God of War game? They throw things like Valkyries and Berserkers at you like Pokemon gym badges, I'm talking eight a game and they're hard boss battles. Boss battles that make you question if it's even designed for you to beat them. But playing these boss battles is pretty 
rewarding to do because the combat system in God of War has been sculpted from fine marble. And on top of all of that, there aren't too many weird collectibles like collecting flowers, like a weird species of flowers or something. Completing this game is getting you to do what every game that's once players to 100% complete it to do, which is fully explore every part of the map. Rather than frantically checking under rocks and behind crevices and stuff for shit that's so randomly placed. In another game that does that oddly perfectly while having a lot of requirements for completion, is Super Mario Odyssey. This is probably the one game that most influences people to 100% it on their first playthrough. At least the power moons. There are 836 power moons and when you're actually playing the game, that number, it, it, it doesn't feel like it's that much. It feels like nothing. Usually the way you 100% complete the game is you buy the game, you play the game, you fall in love with the game, you beat the game, and then you realize that you still want to play it and then you just keep playing it to its 100% max capacity. But with Super Mario Odyssey, with each world I was in, I found myself I, saw, I found myself staying way longer than I had to to find every power moon that was available in the map, which made the playthrough a lot longer than I expected it to be. This game just felt so much like my first ever or one of my first ever video games ever, which was Super Mario 64 and I just couldn't put it down. And each one of the 836 moons, well, a, a good portion of the 836 moons were all different. Some required skill, some required finding out stuff in goofy places, and others just required a keen eye to detail. Odyssey was so obviously designed with in mind for the player to not rip through the story, but to sink into the world that much deeper. If you only collected as many moons as you needed to move on and then moved on, you were not getting your money's worth. You missed out on many games, goofy little callbacks, especially when in the last level of the game, which is spoilers, I guess, for a almost seven year old title, is uh, uh, Peach's Castle. And when you get to the top of that, you find Yoshi, which is a cool callback to the myths and legends of Super Mario 64. Speaking of myths and legends, there was an old playground myth about a mythical Pokemon that you could find under a truck in uh, Vermilion City in the, in the port, and it reached Zoomers like me, even though I was born like almost like 10 years after that game was released. All that to say, I've been playing Pokemon for nearly a decade, and for the first time ever, I can complete a Pokedex with one person, no friends, one device. Yeah, in Pokemon Legends Arceus, another game that I love to 100% complete. The Pokedex, at least. I've always heard the lore of actually completing a Pokedex, but it was always stuff of legend. In Pokemon Legends Arceus, it was a long and arduous task, collecting niche items, catching 253 Pokemon plus Arceus, reloading and loading save files over and over again. But I did it and felt super accomplished, especially because I was catching Arceus for the first time that he was really in a game. And also there was a super hard maybe the hardest Pokemon boss battle at the end of the game, which I love hard boss battles in Pokemon and difficulty in Pokemon in general, but that's a whole nother video topic. I've been playing every Pokemon game, main series and spinoff since like 2005, and this was the first time that I actually completed the Pokedex. I felt like a boss. No, no, I felt like a Pokemon master. That was until I went online and saw that people made live Pokedexes, which means they had the live Pokemon in their box organized and all, so, which kind of made me feel like a chump after that, especially considering the fact that you don't get multiple save files. You have one save file. So that was just their original playthrough and they just, you know, max the fuck out of it. But this was a really fun video to make. While making this video, I remembered how many games I've actually 100 percented and it was more than I said on this list just for time's sake. I, I could do it part two if you want me to. I could do a part two. Just let me know in the comments below. But I remembered how many games I've 100 percented and I remembered how good it feels to get that accomplishment because that's exactly what it is. An accomplishment, a love letter to a game that you love and you just got the most out of it. You saw everything the developers put in there for you that was intent. They, you saw it all. And when you play a game that obviously has a lot of care into it, you as a consumer get all of that care from it and that really comes out when you're 100 percent completing a game especially nowadays when games drop or really anything of super importance drops or or comes out 
people zip through it, they get all they can from it without really diving deeper into it. And then the ever so elusive hype train just moves on to the next thing. But you know, here I was trying to find out a way to get the 863rd power moon in the 2017 Nintendo Switch console launch title Super Mario Odyssey. And one thing you probably also might have caught from watching this video is that I love completing games, but I also hate the 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 overuse uh technique of game developers. Oh yeah, we're just going to put 83 million collectibles out there and you find them all and then come report back to us and we'll print out like a PDF file to your Game Boy or something. But yeah, thank you for watching this video. Thank you for staying this long. Thank you for all my new viewers and thank you for all my new subscribers. Um, I'm really gonna put out a lot of content for y'all this summer, and I got a lot of plans about movies, video games, we're gonna be on Street Fighter 6, we're gonna be on Diablo 4, we're gonna be on the PlayStation Showcase, we're gonna be on Spider-Man, we're gonna be on it all, and thank you for sticking this long, thank you for watching this video, if you like this video and you stayed this long, consider watching my other videos because I got a lot of other videos like this one exactly. Um, so yeah, uh, welcome to the Brett Show. But now you're leaving the bread show. You don't have to leave the bread show because there's a whole lot of bread show in the comments the description. Just check on the channel name. I have a lot of videos just like this. But yeah, show love, spread it. Oh my gosh, I say this every time. Why am I messing this up now? Show love. Oh my gosh, spread love. <laughs> Give inspiration in all you do, and peace out. But you know, here I was trying to find out a way to get the 863rd power moon in the 2017 Nintendo Switch console launch title Super Mario Odyssey.